So a little over a year ago, I got into some niche game called Blue Archive. Well, kind of. Now I could go on about how the gameplay is engaging, the character designs never miss, usually, or how the soundtrack is one of the best I've heard from a video game, but that's the boring stuff. Because Blue Archive has, without a doubt, the biggest coin flip of a community I've ever seen. It's like Reddit 50-50, except instead of a 50% chance of being severely disturbed, you just end up on a watch list. If you manage to avoid that though, somehow, then you'll get to experience some incredibly talented musicians, artists, cosplayers, and more. It's kind of like the game itself, where you spend half your playtime contemplating deep philosophical questions on the nature of paradise and the other half staring at feet. But despite being the sole fandom responsible for keeping Japanese people Twitter alive, Blue Archive fans, like everyone else, have their own set of inside jokes. Like how this character is the game's Philippines representation because her voice actress is half, or how the player character and this guy are super gay and madly in love, or this. But one of the most interesting inside jokes to me surrounds this character, Hayase Yuka, and her weight, which is canonically 100 kilograms, trust me. The whole thing has been extended to the point where she's just become extremely heavy, and I even cast my own lot in with this joke by basically calling her a black hole in this cosplayer's comments. It's clearly an exaggeration because there is no black hole in this image, but silly me and my silly brain thought, what if there was? So strap yourselves in as I become the yapper and make you relive your high school physics trauma, attempt to explain reality warping astrophysics, and connect it all to what is likely the least problematic joke in all of Blue Archive. First, I feel I must explain why Yuka here actually weighs in at 100 kilograms. It begins in one of Blue Archive's side stories, which are some fun reads that help flesh out the world and character interactions. This specific story follows Veritas, the hacker man, hacks or XX underscore anonymous underscore XX club of Blue Archive's tech academy, Millennium Falcon School. What? What, what do you mean it's not called that? Basically, imagine the characters from Watch Dogs 2 if they had the mental age of a 12-year-old. That's Veritas. In this particular story, they decide to do a little bit of trolling and doctor the medical records of other Millennium students, changing our friend Yuka's weight here to 100 kilograms while making themselves smaller, weigh less, etc, etc. They then promptly release the altered data on public social media, and everyone knows that anything released on social media ever must be true, so I see Yuka's weight is 100 kilograms. No, I will not accept anything else. But now comes the fun part, the science. Except here we have our first major problem. You see, black holes are all spherical objects, and all the math involving black holes assumes they're spheres. This, however, is clearly not a sphere, so... Okay, problem solved then. Now we have to do some math, and Blue Archive fans would know what's a video about Yuka without some nasty math. More specifically, we have to talk about escape velocity, since that's what defines a black hole, at least in the simplest way. Escape velocity is simply the speed something needs to escape the gravity of an object, and it depends both on how heavy the object is and how far away you are from it. Yes, I know it's technically a speed because it depends on the direction, so it's only a scalar, you know, I said velocity, but I'm using the more commonly used name for it. For us in our everyday lives, we don't give a damn about escape velocity because the objects around us aren't very heavy, but for rocket scientists, it's a whole nother story. As a few examples, a rocket needs to reach escape velocity to travel to a place like Mars, and an orbiting object needs to slow down below escape velocity so it can fall to Earth. So uh, how do we calculate that? Well, let me reword my definition from earlier a bit. Escape velocity is the initial speed something needs so it can stop at a final destination infinitely far away from another object without extra help. But that cleared things up. But this just means that we give it an initial push, and with no assistance, like from rocket boosters or something, it won't ever come back. Let's say we have Koyuki here, who weighs little m kilograms and is sitting on the surface of our spherical yuka here, are meters away from our center of mass. We have to give Koyuki an initial speed of VE, escape velocity, to escape yuka's gravity and come to a stop infinitely far away. In other words, no matter how far away Koyuki is, she will always keep flying away and never return. This ends up relating to escape velocity through the law of conservation of energy. Remember that? It means that no matter what, I will always try to conserve my energy by sleeping in. So here's our equation. Initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy equals final kinetic energy plus final potential energy. Fun fact, these these two terms can just disappear. Final kinetic energy is zero because we want Koyuki to stop moving, and there's no kinetic energy if there's no movement. Final potential energy is zero for a slightly more complicated math reason. Remember that our final destination is at a distance of infinity, so our potential energy expression just becomes random garbage divided by infinity, and any number divided by infinity is zero. So this is all we're left with, and a few rearranged variables later we get this. Escape velocity equals the square root of 2g big M over r. Big M is Yuka's mass, r is spherical Yuga's radius, and G is this number. Notice that Koyuki's mass little m doesn't actually matter, so congrats, we've found the formula for escape velocity. What does this have to do with black holes? 
So as it turns out, the universe has a speed limit, 299,792,458 meters per second, or approximately 671 million miles per hour. At that speed, you can fly from the Earth to the Sun in about 8 minutes, from the Earth to the Moon in just over a second, and you can orbit the Earth in less time than it takes to blink. Well, I say you, but it's impossible for you to travel at that speed, since nothing with actual mass can. Some of you might have guessed or already know what I'm talking about, the speed of light in a vacuum. Light is the fastest thing in the universe. Nothing can go faster. So what happens when an object's escape velocity is the speed of light? It would have to have a large enough mass and a small enough size, but once it gets there, things get weird. Our formulas start dividing by zero. Objects that approach it are stretched into noodles and never seen again. Light itself, or light that isn't outright eaten by it, bends and moves around it. Time stops entirely. We have a black hole. While everything a black hole is mysterious and downright insane in ways I will never understand, mathematically reaching that point isn't too complicated. All we need to do is change our escape velocity to the speed of light, and with a little rearranging of terms, we get this formula that returns an object's size. This size actually has a special name, the Schwarzschild radius. Every object has a Schwarzschild radius. It's the theoretical size an object would need to be crushed down into in order to reach black hole status. For example, the Sun's Schwarzschild radius is just under 2 miles, the Earth's is just under 9 millimeters, about the size of a grape, and your mom has a Schwarzschild radius too, it's probably massive. Regardless, now we can finally answer our question. So, Yuka is 100 kilograms, she has a Schwarzschild radius. How small would we have to crush her in order for her to become a black hole? Easy. Just punch in some numbers into our formula and 1.4852 times 10 to the negative 25th meters. That's uh meaningful, and problematic. You see, the approximate radius of the smallest atom in the universe, the hydrogen atom, is about 5.29 times 10 to the minus 11th meters, which is about three and a half septillion times larger than a required Yuka black hole size. So Yuka would need to be crushed to be smaller than an atom, but I think it's safe to assume Yuka is made out of atoms, so uh, I guess she can't become a black hole after all. But that ain't stopping me. Let's try a different method. How much mass would we need to create a yucca-sized black hole? Again, our yucca has to be spherical, but now the size of this sphere matters. Specifically, we have to find yucca's volume to then change her into a sphere that takes up that same volume. Doing that is extremely easy. All you have to do is divide her mass by her density. The density of the human body is 985 kilograms per cubic meter, but her mass is a bit more difficult to find. According to the actual game, yucca is 156 centimeters tall, or about 5'1 and a half, and 16 years old, you sick fuck. According to the CDC, this puts Yuka at about the 17th percentile for height at her age. IFF, Yuka is the same percentile for her weight, which I think is fine to assume, she seems about average. That gives her a mass of around 46 kilograms. Let's knock that down a couple kilos since we're using American data, and we have Yuka's alleged mass of about 44 kilograms, but we all know that's not true. Divide that mass by 985 kilograms per cubic meter, and Yuka's volume comes out to around 0.446 cubic meters, which makes a sphere, with a radius of about 22 centimeters. That's about the size of a large beach ball. Okay, so how much mass would a yucca sized beach ball need to be to reach black hole status? Simply plug and play into our Schwarzschild radius formula and we get 1.481 times 10 to the 26th, or 1481 followed by 23 zeros kilograms. Which means nothing until I say that's about 25 times the mass of the Earth. Like, yeah, yucca is heavy and all, haha, but that amount of mass is kinda hard to come by. So, there you have it. Nope, there's one more pointless question we can ask in regards to all this, which involves this formula. This tells us, given the density of something, how much of that thing we would need before it collapses under its own gravity and reaches black hole status. For example, given the density of water, we would need a volume of water equal to about 200 million times the volume of the sun before it collapses under its own weight and forms a black hole. With that, we can answer one final question. How many yukas would we need to do that? Well, we have two options to take here. One is the sheeple method that assumes yuka weighs 44 kilograms, and the other is the free thinkers method that assumes she weighs her true value of 100. Just to be extra thorough though, I'll do both. Assuming yuka has a normal weight means her density is also normal, so we could just use 985 kilograms per cubic meter. Plugging that into our formula yields a black hole volume of 2.77 times 10 to the 35th cubic meters. Given that yuka's volume is 0.446 cubic meters, that means we would 
would need approximately six undecillion, six followed by 36 zeros or six trillion 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 yukas before our massive calculators becomes a black hole. Now comes our real answer. What about our 100 kilo yuka? Well, given our volume of 0 0.0446 cubic meters and our mass of 100 kilograms, that gives us a density of 2242 kilograms per cubic meter, about 2.3 times the average human density. Plugging that into our formula returns a black hole volume of 8.065 times 10 to the 34th power cubic meters. Yuka's volume of 0.0446 cubic meters means that this time, with our 100 kilo yukas, we would only need about 2 undecillion yukas instead of 6. Much easier. So, there you have it. Crushing a 100 kilogram yuka into a black hole isn't even theoretically possible, but a yuka sized black hole would need to have a mass 25 times that of the entire Earth. On the flip side, if you wanted to make a black hole entirely out of yukas, you would need to collect this many of them and herd them all into one place so that they could collapse under their own gravity and form a black hole that way. QED.